Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and this is a short mini course on using streams in Java. In this particular video, we're going to talk about creating streams and what a stream actually is. Although we're also going to look at a couple of examples of stream operations. So what actually is a stream? Well, everyone knows what a stream of water is. That's just some water that's flowing through some kind of a channel, or at least its movement is restricted in some kind of a way. Now, a stream in programming is a stream of data. So we've got a bunch of data items that we are processing one item at a time, as if they're kind of flowing along through a kind of channel. In Java, we have got classes like input stream and file input stream, but that's not what we're talking about here. Those do represent streams of data, but what we are talking about in this course is the actual Stream API. Now the Stream API lets you do a kind of more functional style of programming in Java. And while you could do a lot of your coding in a kind of functional style in Java, generally that would lead to programs that are not easy to understand. And for most people, I would think streams are going to be something that they kind of sprinkle into their code to achieve certain tasks more simply and more elegantly than you could if you had to use kind of a functional or object-oriented style of programming. So don't worry if you don't understand any of that at this point, because it's all going to become clear once you see the code and once you get a chance to practice it a bit yourself. So how do we create a stream in Java? One of the easiest ways to create streams in Java is to create them from an existing collection, like set or map or some kind of list. In that particular case, we already have all the items that we're interested in viewing as a stream. We just want to transform them into some kind of a stream. So let's start by creating a set. I'll just use var here rather than type out set of whatever, and we'll call this set1. And to quickly generate a set, I'll use set.of, and we can put some items in there, which could be objects of some sort, they could be strings, they could also just be integers. Let's have one, two, three, and four, just as a simple example. Now, how do we turn that into a stream? Well, we simply use the stream method. So I can say var stream one equals set one dot stream. And now we can do stream operations on this data. So with streams, we've got two kinds of operations that do something with the data. We've got intermediate operations that transform the data somehow. And we've got terminal operations that finish off the sequence of stream data operations. And here we're going to look at an example of a terminal operation called for each. That enables us to loop over the items in the stream. So we're going to do stream one dot for each. And now we have to implement the consumer interface. But that is what we call a functional interface, meaning it's an interface that only has one method in it. And because it only has one method, we can easily implement that one method using a Lambda expression. And again, if you're not too familiar with Lambda expressions, don't worry about it. Just practice the examples that you're going to see here, and they will start to gradually feel more and more familiar to you. So we need a Lambda expression, which is it's a kind of anonymous function, really, a function that doesn't have a name, which accepts one parameter. And we start by typing the list of parameters, which can be in round brackets, but just for one parameter, it doesn't have to be. So let's call the parameter A. This is what the for each stream operation is actually going to pass to our Lambda expression. Then we have an arrow, and then we have the implementation of the Lambda expression. And in this case, we just want to do system.out.print line, and we print A. And now if we run this, we see we've printed out the items in the stream. And so far, that doesn't look like anything special or particularly useful, but it can be very useful, as we'll see later on as we go through this little course. A quicker way to do this would actually be just to use a method reference. So if I duplicate this line, then instead of going to the trouble of creating a Lambda expression, I could just do system.out colon colon print line, 
which gives us a reference to the print line method. And that will also print out the items in the stream. But when I try to do that, I find we get an illegal state exception. And the reason for that is with streams, you can only iterate over them once. And this is an important point. If I want to iterate over those data items again, I'm going to have to just create a new stream. But let's comment this out and check out how it works with this new way of doing it. And we get the same result as before. Of course, because it's a set, we're not necessarily going to see things in the same order as the order that I define them. And you can see here they're coming out 4321. Now, if you'll excuse a really quick bit of advertising, if you do want a more systematic introduction to things like method references, lambda expressions, and streams, you can find that on caveofprogramming.com. If you look at my courses in there, I've got a Java 11 for Complete Beginners course, and I cover all of this stuff here in a great deal of detail. And there are lots of exercises in this course also. So you can see down here, we've got somewhere, streams, and we've got stuff on method references, lambda expressions, and so on. And you can actually get access to all of my courses at the moment for in the region of $20 a month. Usually it's a little bit over that at the moment, but if you click the link in the description, you can get a 20% discount on the usual price. And that's a monthly fee, but you can unsubscribe anytime you like. Okay, so back to the course. Let's create a stream from a list as another example. And this time I'll use syntax that's a little bit more terse. So we can use arrays dot as list and put some array items in here. Let's use strings this time, like one, two, three, and four. And straight away, let's take this list and turn it into a stream with the stream method and then loop over it with for each. And again, here we could just use a method reference and supply print line there. So let's say system.out.print and actually that dot there, that needs to be a double colon to say that we need a method reference. And if I run that, we get one, two, three, four. So if you're not too familiar with method references and Lambda expressions, this is going to seem like some foreign language that you don't understand. But if you just type it out a few times, play with it a little bit, it will soon start to feel more familiar than you might initially expect. Now let's take a look at creating a stream without referencing an existing collection. And we'll do that using the stream builder class. So let's say I want a stream of floating point values of double values. Let's say I can do stream dot builder, and this is a generic type. So let's specify double there. We'll call this stream builder and I'll set that equal to stream dot builder. So this is going to be a stream specialized for dealing with a stream of, in this case, double values. So we could add values into this stream by doing stream builder dot add and let's add 1.2. And this add method is chainable. So we can do stuff like stream builder dot add 2.3 dot add, let's say 3.4 dot add 7.1, whatever we like. When we finally finished adding values, we can get an actual stream using the build method. So let's say stream, and this is actually a stream of double, right? I could use var there instead as a quicker way of avoiding some typing. Let's call it stream two equals stream builder dot build. And then again, we can do intermediate and terminal operations on it. And again, for this introductory video, we'll just have a terminal operation. We'll just do for each so we can take a look at it. So stream two dot for each, and let's use system dot out colon colon print line using a method reference. And when I run this, we get a bunch of doubles that were looping over. Now, in these cases, we kind of already have a bunch of items. Even in this case, we I've actually hard coded the items that are going to be in the stream. And then we're turning those into a stream and we're just looping over them with for each. 
But with streams, we also have the opportunity to create infinite streams. So we can actually generate the stream as we go along. And not until we reach a terminal operation will all the values that we specified in the stream actually start being created and then, in this case, printed out. So of course, if we do this, we need to make sure we have some way of terminating the stream eventually. But now the focus is going to be on generating the stream items dynamically rather than having a bunch of items and then just turning them into a stream. We can use the range method of the int stream interface to dynamically generate a stream of integers. So this isn't yet a infinite stream, but we are now dynamically generating the stream rather than using existing items and turning those into a stream. And by the way, in addition to int stream, there's also double stream and long stream. So let's go down here and type int stream, that's actually an interface dot range, and we can specify the start and end of the range. And the numbers we get will include the lower limit here, and they won't include the upper limit. So for example, one to three would give us the numbers one and two. Let's actually try that just to prove it. So I'll type one for the start of the range and three for the end of the range. And that actually returns a stream, which we could make a variable refer to, or we could also directly here call for each on it so that we can take a look at it. Let's do for each. And again, I'm just going to supply a method reference to print line here. So let's just paste that in and run it and see what we get. So there we get the numbers one and two. So if we start with, for example, zero, and we go up to 10, we're going to get the zero, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, as you can see here. Now let's take a look at a somewhat more flexible way of generating an in stream. Another way that we can accomplish this is by using the iterate method. So let's write in stream dot iterate. And now we supply a number that we want to start with, which of course has to be an integer just because we're working with int stream specifically. Let's try starting with two. And then we have a Lambda expression that's going to operate on each previous member of the stream to generate the next element in the stream. So this Lambda expression is going to receive one parameter. Let's call it A again. And then we have the arrow. And then we have some kind of mathematical operation that's going to be applied to each of the members of the stream successfully to generate the next element. Let's try, for example, a plus two. And then I'm going to just print this out. And this is going to be actually an infinite stream, which usually isn't any much use. But we're going to see a couple of different ways that we can stop this stream, stop it iterating. So if we run this now, we get a load of big numbers. And I have to stop this with uh, the red stop button here. And we can see that the, the values are going up two at a time. And if I could scroll all the way to the start, which I probably can't because it's gone off my buffer here in the output window, we actually start with two and then we add two to it every time. But it'll be easier to see what's happening if we create some way for this stream to actually terminate. So one way we can do that is by putting another Lambda expression in the middle here, which returns true as long as we want to keep going and returns false when we want to stop. Let's use, for example, A again and just say A arrow A is less than 100. So we're going to keep going as long as the value of the element in the stream is less than 100. And then when it reaches 100, we'll stop. And now if I run this, you can see that we get up to 98. And we can actually go back to the beginning now. And this is where we actually started at 2. So we started with 2. And then this got applied to the 2. So we added 2 to it to give us four, and we ran this check, and that was still less than 100, so we keep going. We add two again to get six, still less than 100, and so on. And eventually we reach 100, and at that point, this will terminate, and we won't get any more elements added to the stream, so we'll stop with 98. An alternative way to do this would have been as follows. Let's just copy that. I'm actually gonna put a couple of blank lines in the output here, because then it will be a little bit easier to see what's happening, I think. 
So let's have a system.out.print line there and one here as well. And then I'm just going to duplicate this and move it down. So let's get rid of that middle argument now. So now we've got an infinite stream that's being generated starting at two and we're just adding two at a time to generate each successive member of the stream. But another way of terminating the stream would be to use the take while intermediate stream operation. So I could write here take while and we have a dot there to chain on the for each. And what we need in here is simply a lambda expression that will be true as long as we want to keep generating values in the stream. So let's try here, for example, just using A again, we can use any letter or a fuller variable name if you prefer. A arrow and A less than 30, let's say. And then if we run this, we're going to get the values two, the first member that we specified here, all the way up to 28. So if all this looks cryptic to you, the thing to do is just try it out and practice because even if you don't fully understand how lambda expressions work or you don't know all the ins and outs of them or, or even if you haven't used method references before, if you type this stuff out a few times and experiment with it, it will start to seem just totally normal and you'll get the hang of it really quickly. Now we're not limited to using iterate with int stream. We could do a more general version of this Let's have maybe a couple of blank lines and I'll just format that. We could actually use the stream interface itself and then say iterate and we could do this even with a string or an integer or a double or even something more complicated potentially like a list. But we're going to see some more complicated examples later on as we go through the course and we're going to keep it relatively simple just in this introductory video. So as an example, let's start with a string. That's going to be the first element in our stream. Let's say the letter A. And then we'll have a lambda expression. So this parameter is going to accept that string A. And let's just take that string A and add to it another letter A, like this. And then we'll have a for each so that we can look at it. And actually, we also want to terminate it somehow. So let's put a take while in there as an intermediate string operation like this. And now we can't say less than 30 because that less than operator doesn't apply to strings, but we could do something like this. So a arrow a dot length less than 10, let's say, or 20. And let's see what that does. So if I run that now, we get a bunch of strings so starting with just a single letter A, we specify the starting point there. We generate successive items in this stream by adding another A, actually concatenating technically, just appending another A to the previous item. So that generates a new string. It's not actually modifying the original string. It's generating a new string and inserting that into the stream. And we keep doing this as long as the length of the string that we're creating is less than 30. So we're going to end up with 19 letter A's all strung together. And then we have this terminal stream operation here, which is just looping through all of these strings and printing them out. Now let's take one last example of generating a stream. And then I think that's plenty because most of the time you're probably just going to create streams from existing collections anyway, most likely, or else you might use int stream, for example, to create uh, something that you can iterate through with successive numbers. But, you know, it's, it's probably not that common to use lots and lots of different ways of generating streams. But let's see one more way anyway, for the sake of completeness here. Well, not completeness, but for the sake of seeing a bunch of different methods of doing this. So we can also use the generate method. And let's actually use that to generate random numbers. And for that, we're going to need a random number generator, which I'll call random with a lowercase r. And we're going to set that equal to a new random. So this is probably the simplest way of generating random numbers in Java. We can use, for example, the next double method of this random object 
to create random numbers between 0 and 1. And we're going to use here stream.generate. And now we just need a lambda expression that accepts no parameters and returns the next element of the stream. So it's pretty simple, really. If we've got a lambda expression that accepts no parameters at all, we need to just use round brackets here rather than a parameter name like A or whatever, or B, whatever you like. So we'll have ra empty round brackets to denote the zero parameters of this lambda expression, and then an arrow, and then let's say random dot next double. Now this by itself will be an infinite stream, so let's put a take while in it. Let's have a dot take while, and we'll say A arrow, and we'll keep going while A is greater than 0 0.1. One and it's going to be a matter of chance now how many items we actually get in this stream. So as soon as we get a random number generated that's less than 0 0.1, then we're going to stop generating items. And I'm going to put a for each on the end of that and save that. And then let's run that and see what it does. So now, well, that's stopped really quickly. Let's try running it again. And now we've, by chance, it stopped immediately the first time, but now you can see by chance again, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six random numbers before we actually generated one that was less than or equal to 0 0.1 and then the stream stopped. So this is only going to keep going as long as the value generated in the stream is greater than 0 0.1. You could try a smaller number like 0 0.01 if you want even more random numbers generated. And then we've got a whole bunch of them generated. So on average now, I suppose you get about 99 numbers being generated before, before you stop, but that's just the average. So that's it for this video. If any of this seems confusing, I strongly recommend typing out these examples and getting them to work for yourself. It's often easier just to type things out and understand them after that than it is to first understand them and then type them, I find. If I'm faced with unfamiliar code, I often like, where possible, to just type it out and kind of get it partially into my brain before I then attempt to understand it further. So have a go at these, type them out, and then experiment with them. And in the next video, we're going to look at some useful things you can do with streams. I haven't decided specifically what yet, but there are several important things that we need to cover in this course. And by the end of this little course, you'll be fairly fluent in using streams and you'll be able to drop them into your code all over the place wherever it's useful to do so.